Hello there, Russell Stewley. World leader, pressure point fighting. Still boxing coach for Cambodia. Tons of Dan Grades, loads of them. They, they're not important, it's not why you're here. You're here to find out where your weight should go when you throw in your strikes. Right then, let's find out where your weight should go when you're throwing strikes. Now, many, many people, we'll take a simple jab as an example. Many, many people, they push off the back foot, nothing wrong with that. They're transferring the weight when it's go forward, nothing wrong with that. Let's exaggerate it so I can make a, a point. They transfer it and they go up, up. And then they throw the backhand and they're going up, up. Because they're transferring their weight what they want their weight to go forward into the strike nothing wrong with that but as they transfer it and they push off they push up and i'm exaggerating this to make a point so they're here and it goes up 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 well there are times when you want to punch up of course if you've got a much taller opponent you might well be punching up so there's nothing wrong with punching up but let's assume for a moment that your opponent's roughly your size, same height, maybe even a little bit smaller. If you transfer your weight up, you're fighting gravity and you must be slower going up. If you transfer your weight more straight or even down, you're working, when you go punch down, you're working with gravity, so you're probably going to be that little bit quicker and that little bit more power in there. So, when you transfer, try to think of transferring straight or down, so that I'll exaggerate again, so that the weight drops. This is where old time terms like the drop step, etc., came into force, because you're dropping as you're going in, pop, pop. So, exaggerating it for you, that sinking the weight. Is working with gravity. Same with the backhand. That sinking the weight is working with gravity. No matter whether it's a punch, an elbow, a kick, doesn't matter. Let gravity work for you. So you can transfer, boom, and drop down. Now, other people ask, where does your weight go on hooks? Then, well, on a hook. Think of it like this. A hook is more of a circular movement, but a circle is just millions and millions of straight lines put together. So at the point of actual impact, probably let's say on the jaw, it's going in a straight line through the jaw. Whichever angle it's going at, it's still straight, it's not curved. The curve is lots of straight lines, remember. So on that actual point of impact, whichever direction it's going through the jaw, it's still straight. It might be straight that way, that angle, that angle, that angle, that angle, whatever, but it's still straight. So knowing that, and knowing that the best angle really is slightly down because we know that we're allowing our weight to drop, we're working with gravity and we're probably getting a little bit faster and you can accelerate through something down quicker than you can accelerate through something up, it's probably best that your hooks have got a slightly downward trajectory. So when you practice them, practice getting a good rotational torque in your body and making sure that the punch doesn't always go straight, but sometimes it drops down give it a try, work it out, see if it works for you. Other things about your weight is it's going to go in the direction that your punch is actually going. So there might be times that when you throw, let's say it's a front hook, that there might be a step across, exaggerated, there might be a step across whap, as you throw it. It might be that it's more of a check hook, so this back leg might be coming out this way, but you're still sending the weight down that way around so you're still transferring it that way but you're just looking at the other angle of the movement of the back foot but you must always be thinking where do i want the power to go 
what direction do I want the power to go? And that's where my weight should be going. So with uppercuts, obviously you can't do an uppercut that goes down. So you want to make sure that you're not just doing arms, which is what a lot of people do. If your body weight is underneath the punch properly, then when you punch, you can transfer your body weight right from your feet all the way up and through and, and in. And it means you don't need a big arm swing because from here, there's a connection between your hip and your elbow, which is more advanced, but you can then allow the body weight to do most of the work. And it's a short punch, but still very powerful. Look at old clips of the best ever himself, Senor Roberto Duran, hands of stone. You watch him in, in close clinch work. When he's doing his little short uppercuts in close, he's literally coming up in the air. He's literally putting that much into it. He's got a little jump almost. Well, not almost, there is. Because it's that push off, that bang, that ballistic, powerful movement starting from right down there. Instead of doing this, which is what most people do, it's got up there. And that's what gives you explosive power. So, try it out in all your strikes. Really concentrate and think, where's my power going? How's it working? Which way do I want the power to go? Therefore, that's the direction and the angle at which you want to transfer your body weight as fast as you possibly can, and it must accelerate through. Because a body weight that accelerates through the target is the one that does all the damage. Anyway, try it out. Let me know what you think. If you like it, you can press like and subscribe and all that jazz. If you don't, well, hey, well, I don't know. But I have heard that if you press like and subscribe, I've just heard this, that you win the lottery next week. Could be true. Who knows? Anyway, thank you. See you later.